Well, you know, I think everybody talking, including my buddy Jim this morning, about communism and the party and all that, this has nothing to do with isms. I'm too old for isms. This has to do with a single strongman government afraid of losing power. The threat is free circulation of energy. They have now wonderful tools to manage energy, the government, and manage information. And so basically, uh, they've taken on, since the Ant IPO was canceled, they've uh, been slowly nationalizing the information industry as a way of controlling uh, the dialogue inside China. So we, you know, it feels in the long run like there has to be a trade-off between power and growth. And uh, perhaps we're all going to see, in China's case, whether they can have both. More in the near term, as far as investors are concerned, are you basically warning them away from Chinese names of all varieties? Well, I, as I said uh, f a few days ago on, the, uh, on the, uh, Fast Money, the, this is a spicy meatball. This is not something most investors should even touch. If you don't have on-the-ground information sources in China, I'd stay away from this. However, long-term, companies like Alibaba and Billy Billy, Billy Billy is the eye of the hurricane for today's issues. Mm -hmm. um, those are going to be uh, among the best tech companies in the world. China's long-term position in the global economy will depend on their ability to attract and, and retain tech talent. And uh, so they have a, a real, she has a trade-off problem between the tech industry and control short-term uh, over his power base. He can't kill the tech industry. He can only wound it. And uh, these are companies uh, today, uh, both Billy Billy and Pinduoduo are companies that are selling for two times their revenues two years out. And Alibaba is selling for two times their earnings three years out. Right. These companies are just way too cheap. So I would have little positions in them to watch and long term, I want to have significant positions in all, all of those companies. Because I, I suppose for most investors, they might understand the near term risks and, and the posturing or, you know, otherwise that China's doing here in order to make sure that it controls information and data. But they can't possibly have an interest in harming these companies in the longer run. Why would they? Wouldn't investors ultimately be on the side of Chinese growth or the Chinese Communist Party if they have ownership in these names? Uh, absolutely. And, you know, uh, the Huawei story was the beginning of this and uh, uh, the U.S. attacking uh, Huawei. Behind that was the Belt and Road campaign, uh, which is an attempt to push Chinese influence into Africa and Latin America and, Southern, and South Asia. And the U.S. is now pushing back. You know, uh, there's a little bit of a good news story here uh, last couple of days, Kelly, too. Uh, two weeks ago, the U.S. tried to have an undersecretary visit the vice minister, uh, foreign minister of China, and China offered up a fifth level official. Mm -hmm. uh, we turned it down, which was the right thing to do. Yesterday, they offered up a vice minister or a, 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 the vice minister, foreign minister, which means they're now on parity. So I think long term, we have to have dialogue with China. We're the only two elephants that are left in the room. We have to find a way to at least yeah. manage ourselves to not blow the place up. John. And more dialogue is better than less dialogue. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.